D&D Beyond now fits in the palm of your hand with the free D&D Beyond app. It's the perfect tool set for beginners, regular players, and seasoned dungeon masters. Play faster with the guided character creator and access your character sheets, spells, and abilities wherever you go. All of your adventures and source books are at your fingertips, even when you're offline. Easily find and access the rules you need when you need them. With more features to come, download the free D&D Beyond app today. Welcome back to D&D Beyond Dragon Month rages on beautifully and to look at a few more of the things previewing what we're going to get in Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons, please welcome back Michael Galvis and multi-talented dragon appreciator Elisa Pearl. Hi! Hello! <laughs> so if you caught our show the other day, you know that we started taking a look at the previews that were shared at at D D celebration the other weekend of some of the good good stuff coming our way in fizzband's treasury of dragons uh and we have a few more of those to go down as we get ready for the release of that book and one of those is that not only are we going to get dragons for pets if we're rangers but we get new ways of being dragon born new dragons to meet and maybe dancing with dragons <laughs> so those two previews <laughs> are up today and let's start first michael what do you think of these new metallic dragonborn so we actually talked a bit about the dragonborn when they were in unearthed arcana a few months ago um and looking at what we have now um from the preview that was released i am just as excited as i was before um my first impression of the metallic dragonborn is there's more options here i always love more options on what i can do with my action or with attacks um and there's uh just a really great way to be interacting with enemies in combat uh in more than ways than just make this save for you take damage so i really appreciate that sort of approach that they've taken with uh the breath weapon that they've offered First thoughts on the Metallic Dragon before, before before we dive in, Elisa? Um, they're gonna be real pretty. And um, I agree that the it's exciting to have more options. And um it feels like these dragon this version of the Dragonborn scales more excitingly too. So that's something Ooh. to look forward to for sure. Also, nice pun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even I do puns and don't even realize, honestly. I didn't, I didn't it's <laughs> just a, a passive skill that you have turned on all the time. It's brilliant, brilliant. Uh, I think that you are right that they will likely be very beautiful. Um, and supporting evidence for that is that this is just one of types of Dragonborn we're expecting to come down the pike in Fizzbands. And we've already had a look at what the gem Dragonborn are going to look like uh, when we get that book in our hands. And I think they are incredibly beautiful uh these these are the folks hanging out by this campfire I, I know that like the epic shots of dragon combat are are so breathtakingly beautiful that we've seen for fizz bands but this is the one that made me be like i need it <laughs> yeah. I, I always love new player options um especially when you have mm -hmm. such unique looking dragonborn as these in the artwork um and, and the fact that they're you know kind of splitting things up for the Dragonborn race is just really exciting. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the changes in approach. So you're still going to be able to roll a Dragonborn out of the player's handbook, out of the basic rules, uh, should you so desire. And those you will remember, uh, I mean, they're, they're just Dragon, okay, A, Dragonborn are cool looking. Uh, that's just an mm -hmm. important thing that we should note right at the top. That's so neat, mm -hmm. born of a dragon, uh, dragon draconic ancestry influencing you and giving you cool stuff, just a great, Fun idea. Uh, I know breaking news from many years ago, but it's still true. <laughs> um, uh, and the the standard Dragonborn have uh, different breath weapons that relate to their ancestry, uh, but not br strictly broken down by category. They just sort of listed out um, 
black, blue, brass, bronze, copper, gold, green, red, silver, white, all kind of mixed together with their various shapes and damage types um, for that breath weapon that came with the Dragonborn Ancestry um, and the damage resistance that would eventually follow. Um, but obviously we can see from this preview of Metallic Dragonborn that they're breaking things out in a different way uh, for the Fizzband's revamp. Uh, so let's start here. Dragonborn with metallic ancestry lay claim to the tenacity of metallic dragons, brass, bronze, copper, gold, and silver, whose hues glint in their scales. Theirs is the fire of heart and forge, the cold of high mountain air, the spark of inspiration, and the scouring touch of acid that purifies. You are humanoid, you are medium, your walking speed is 30 feet, uh, and you get metallic ancestry. Michael, you want to walk us through this first uh, trait that's going to come with being a metallic dragonborn? The metallic ancestry. So uh, you have metallic, um, you have, I've already messed up. <laughs> you have a metallic dragon ancestor, granting you a special magical affinity. So you choose one kind of dragon from the metallic ancestry table. And that determines the damage type of your other traits. So if you're you, you have a brass dragon ancestor, you're going to be working with the fire damage type, or a bronze, you're going to be uh, a lightning damage type, um, and that will that matters into when you get into the breath weapon. And speaking of which, you want to tell us about that breath weapon and how this might be a little bit different. Sure. So. Uh, when you take the attack action on your turn, you can replace one of your attacks with an exhalation of magical energy in a 15-foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes 1d10 damage of the type that you picked for your metallic ancestry. On a successful save, they take half as much. So the this is very similar to what we currently have um or what the what i'm going to call the old dragonborn has um this is your pretty standard breath weapon the big differences here is that uh the old dragonborn's breath weapon it was a line or cone based off of your type uh and further the damage that it dealt uh has also been updated so it's gone from a standard d6 over to a 1d10 and the scaling on this new breath weapon is better. Um, but most importantly, and these are two key things that really make this breath weapon um, really stand out when compared to the older uh, Dragonborn's breath weapon. And that is, uh, if you have uh, extra attack, you can replace one of your attacks with a breath weapon. And uh, you also get extra uses of your breath weapon, where before I believe you could only use it once per long rest. Um, uh, you could, you can use shorter this long, breath weapon. Yeah, but just once. Yes, shorter or long. Um, this new breath weapon, you get just a number of uses per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. So as you go up uh, more in levels, then you're going to be, and when you get in those like sorts of boss fights where you're like, I need to pull out all the punches you can go ahead and just use all of your breath weapons, you know, like back to back to back, which is uh, really handy uh, just to kind of have. And of course that, that uh, the breath weapon for the standard Dragonborn is your action. So that's a subtle difference, it, but it makes a difference. If you have multiple attacks, you can use one of them on this, implying of course mm -hmm. that the others are free to, you know, smack people, do whatever you want. Um... <laughs> Lisa, thoughts on the breath weapon of the metallic dragonborn? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, n nothing to add uh, besides what Michael said about the way it scales up, bigger damage, and um, how it's kind of simplified too. Yeah, the way, like the area of effect of your breath weapon is much more simplified in this version. Um, it, was, it seemed always a little bit random to me which ones were lines and which ones were cones before. Um, and I like yeah. that there's like metal cone, done. Um, as a yeah. DM, I appreciate that kind of thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, with these, I think we were talking a bit beforehand about the, the Unearthed Arcana you made reference to. This one, it looks like has not changed a lot from the Unearthed Arcana other than I think a slight different 
different way that they scaled up the damage. Um, but uh, it seems to work pretty similarly. Uh, the next one up is the Draconic Resistance that you're going to get. You have resistance to the damage type associated with your metallic ancestry. Tracks. Makes sense. Um, <laughs> yep. Straightforward. But, it works. Aliza, as it turns out, you have not one, but two kinds of breath weapon going on in this new version mm -hmm. of the Metallic Dragon. So the Metallic Dragonborn now has a breath weapon and a Metallic breath weapon. Aliza, what is that? So the Metallic breath weapon kicks in at third level. You gain your second breath weapon, which is when you take the attack action on your turn, you can, once again, replace one of your attacks with an exhalation in a 15-foot cone. So same area of effects. The save DC for this breath is same thing, 8 plus your constitution modifier plus your proficiency bonus. But here's where it differs. You have two options here. One is innervating breath. So just like with dragons, you get like an actual dragon kind of breath here where each creature in the cone must succeed on a constitution saving throw or become incapacitated until the start of your next turn pretty dope and the other option is repulsion breath each creature in the cone must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed 20 feet away from you and be knocked prone and once you use your metallic breath weapon you can't do so again until you finish a long rest y'all thoughts on this, <laughs> this is one like I mean, it feels like it feels almost like the metallic dragonborn are just more directly descended from their dragons because this skill right here, the innervating breath, is a direct like pulling directly from things that dragons can do. And you don't have this with regular dragonborn, but with metallic dragonborn, this is something that you can do. So yeah, I just think of like narratively how you explain that that you know that change and that like beefing up of the dragonborn to me that's what it is is that they're just like more directly descended from their dragons i love that and i love the idea of uh i don't know please play this at your table in any way you so desire but i kind of love the idea of having this catch an individual dragonborn by surprise like they're at third level they're just trucking along in their adventures and <laughs> then like at some point they do something and like maybe they you know plan this ahead and make sure everyone's cool with it but like if you accidentally knock out someone from your own party uh in a moment and you're like what just yeah. happened i don't know i just think it sounds delightful um hopefully yeah, there's, not there's when they're there's in nothing more like, danger. there's nothing like mm -hmm. discovering your metallic breath weapon by belching in your friend's face and knocking them out whoops <laughs> I mean, a valid option with the for the right table and circumstances. Um, Michael, thoughts on the yeah. metallic breath weapon? I these really excite me. Um, if you haven't noticed, with between the breath weapon and then the two metallic breath weapons, you can target dexterity, constitution, or strength saving throws, which I really like the that sort of variety of um, mm -hmm. being able to hone in on your enemy's weaknesses and then using it to your advantage. Um, when I think of Dragonborn, um, of course they can be played as any class, but for me personally, when I think of a Dragonborn, you know, my first thinking is uh, your sort of fighter type, your barbarian type, um, and more, more so the barbarian who is going to have some pretty beefy constitution uh, and therefore have a you know, slightly higher DC for enemies who are on the brunt end of their breath weapon. Um, and so for those barbarians, it excites me that they're going to have more tools uh, to pull from with these different breath weapons. Aliza, what would you want to do with this metallic breath weapon? Hmm. Player concept or a, a DM usage that jumps to mind? Uh, well, definitely uh, DM usage. Uh, I think it would be really cool to have a bunch of metallic dragonborn guards for some type of special location, whether it's uh, a hidden treasure or a really high-powered um, big bad. And this is what they use. You you might you know stroll up to them and they actually don't have any weapons at all. They're not carrying any weapons, and it may seem strange, but it's because they do this. <laughs> I anyway. love that, like unarmed or am I? The quality, you know. <laughs> yeah. Imagine how uh, terrifying these 
metallic dragonborn would be if they were guarding a bridge uh over a cliff and they could just Ooh. breath weapon you off of the bridge i mean yeah you have no you have very few options if that were to happen yeah <laughs> I also love that we've seen a lot of things that will grant you sort of different elemental damage type, but granting to an entire playable race these kinds of uh, condition abilities, I think is really, really interesting um, because, and I'm going to look up the details to make sure that I don't get these wrong, but please, uh, Michael, correct me. Um, a prone creature, for instance, your only option is to crawl unless you stand up ending the condition uh and i can't remember you use half your movement or a uh, bonus mm -hmm. action to get up from prone which one it eats half your movement yeah um an attack roll against the creature has advantage uh if you're within five feet of the creature while uh, otherwise the attack roll has disadvantage the creature has disadvantage on attack rolls while it's prone um but not only that in addition to that i I looked it up and then I forgot, but if you're incapacitated, you can't do anything. You can't take actions. I don't think you can take reactions. Yeah, you can't take actions or reactions, but you still have your bonus action. I actually, I only know that because a couple sessions ago in my current campaign, there was uh, a monster. I wish I could remember what it was, but one of its abilities, it was like an AOE effect. Uh, and if you failed to save it, incapacitated and it had one of my one of my players i felt so bad it was two or three rounds he was incapacitated because he just kept failing the save and it's just like oh well yeah. <laughs> i gotta make it challenging this could be mm -hmm. you when you're a metallic dragonborn using your once per long rest metallic dragon breath uh, uh to in literally incapacitate your enemies mm -hmm. uh i love that it's like you know, that won't be that BP a check depending on your own constitution. So there's ways to lean into it and it's not necessarily unstoppable, but that's still tremendously powerful. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think that's just such a cool, I love what Elisa, what you said about it playing to the theming of dragons, like uh, that enervating effect, that repulsive effect, like knockback breath. That's, that's frankly so cool. Uh, yeah. So I'm obviously Excuse excited to get my hands. Skyrim vibes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can also, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, fun moments for people because, come on, repulsion breath that knocks you back prone, like it, the the air. There's so much room for comedy there. <laughs> there's a lot, yeah. You're like, woo, whatever that like, what was. Is in I these need to metallic <laughs> dragonborn's diet. Yeah, like what are they eating that is knocking people <laughs> prone? <laughs> Or sapping their very energy. It's truly a world of potential mm -hmm. uh, flavoring possibilities awaits you with your metallic dragonborn. Uh, final thoughts. What are you going to roll up when you get your first crack at the metallic dragonborn as we're going to see him in Fizz Fans? Michael? Um, I want to do a battle master fighter. You know, I said barbarian because barbarians are, this is really great for their for them. Uh, but I, I love the maneuvers of the battle master and this has that sort of flavor uh except an aoe effect you know i don't i don't know that any of the battle master maneuvers have an aoe ability so this is kind of like your way in to be like there's a bunch of goons in front of me i'm just gonna breath weapon them in the face i love it <laughs> aliza yeah yeah i don't know um hmm. you know i would probably do something really wacky with this and make it like a dragonborn druid just to kind of mess around and uh, uh see what that's like um because again like i always i like to just kind of think about the flavoring and the narrative with metallic dragonborn and um yeah like a druid who has like um specific connection to like m like silver and ore and things like that you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. can draw from the natural minerals in the earth that to me is really interesting and weird so that's probably what i would do well i think there's a lot of great possibilities there especially since as we've been talking about the the mythology that surrounds dragons has to do with their connection to the plains and the way they bend the world around them so i feel like a druid is a very natural fit with a dragonborn if you have a dragon in your ancestor you have a relationship to the land that is going to be different from anyone else's 
and it might look like fire breath on you. Uh, but you know, it, it's still going to reflect your particular way of interacting with your plane or, you know, other planes. We'll see where life takes you. Um, but I think that's you know a really I, intriguing angle. You know what I was also thinking about for a character for this um, was a College of Swords bard because they also get extra attack. Um, and then you can take the Dragon Fear feat, which increases your strength, constitution, or charisma by one. But then you also get another breath weapon option that scales off of your charisma modifier. Um, and so you can frighten it. Uh, the effect is that you can frighten creatures within 30 feet of you. So I think that would be kind of like a really cool way to weave in the, the metallic dragonborn in, in with the, mm -hmm. the College of Swords and then this, this older feat that we have uh, that maybe you had previously overlooked because of the limitations from the old dragonborn. Oh, that mm -hmm. sounds that like sounds so cool. much fun. And of course, anything that you any anything that you want to pair with this that's going to, as Michael's sort of hinting here, that's going to give you extra attack is going to be a lot of fun to play with. But if you want to just go outside of the box and find stuff that relies on bonus actions and reactions and other stuff and just use your action to breath weapon things, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see some of these come into the table. When we get Fizzman's Treasure Your Dragons, of course, if you pre-order that on D&D Beyond, you can get some cool pre-order perks.